Hello, welcome to Sunny Portland. My name is Sean Priestley. I work for the Andrew Simpson Foundation uh, and I'm an RA sail foil coach assessor. Today we're having a closer look at foils and user-friendly foiling boats. I have got two boats um, kindly loaned to us by the Andrew Simpson Centre. Uh, we have a Wasp, the established uh, racing class that it is now. It's also a great way to get into foiling. Uh, and we have the Nikki, the first ever junior purpose-built foiling boat. For this video, we are going to have a look at centerline foilers specifically. All right, let's do it. Starting with the Wasp, we're just going to briefly have a look at some of the parts that may seem uh, a little bit unusual or a bit new if we've not been foiling before. So um, right from the front of the boat, you'll notice that we have something poking down from the bow. This is our wand. So important to know for now that the wand has a direct relationship with the first main foil that we'll talk about in a second. So that's just an important point. But the wand moves back and forth and it's off the front. Moving further back, we have the vertical section here, like a normal centerboard or a rudder, and attached to that at the bottom, we have a big horizontal foil. So that's actually where we get a lot of our lift produced that lifts the boat out of the water. Again, we'll come back to, to the systems and talk about that in a little bit more detail, but um, we have the, the, the vertical and the horizontal front foil that helps lift the boat out of the water. Uh, you'll notice that we have wings on our foiling boats. It's because quite often the hulls are narrow and you get quite a lot of excess power and apparent wind in the rigs. So in order to uh, ensure you have the right amount of writing moment, we have wings on the boat. Moving back towards the back, we have another foil. So you'll see we have the vertical section and the horizontal section of a rudder foil. So it's not just one foil that lifts uh, the boat out of the water, but we have two. So this one on the back is attached to a tiller and what you will see is that this tiller has a special feature to help adjust the angle of the foil. Again, something that we're going to come to in a bit more detail in a moment. Moving over to the Nikki, we have um, pretty much the same thing. So again, we have a vertical and a horizontal rudder foil. You'll notice that we have a wider hull. So this is more of a scow uh, moth rather than a skiff moth. We have uh, the wings again and we have a vertical and horizontal foil on the main foil. So again, two foils to lift the boat out of the water. And as we finally make our way to the bow, we have our wand, just a slightly different design, but the, the same thing, a wand to help control our, our main foil. Starting to have a look in a little bit more detail then about how these boats lift out of the water and start flying. Um, we're gonna start with the wand, because like we mentioned previously, the wand um, has a direct relationship with the main foil. So basically what that means is, as the wand is pushed further back in the water when the boat is sailing in displacement mode, through a system of push rods, that is affecting the angle of attack on the main foil. So we have our assistant James down here from the Andrew Simpson Centre, and he is helping um, just to highlight that angle difference as the wand moves. Now, instead of launching into a huge theoretical talk about the uh, lift force that's created, if we can agree that the more angle of attack we put into the foil is going to create more lift as well as more drag, but the, the more lift we're going to create, that is the force that is going to lift our boat out of the water. So as the wand is pushed further back and we're in the water, we create more angle of attack on the main foil, that creates more lift and that starts to lift the boat clear of the water. Once we are clear of the water, the wand then has some distance to drop back down so it's in line with the water line. And as it does that, it levels the foil off. So there is less lift produced by the foil. Uh, at this point, if the boat needs to come further down and closer towards the water, the wand will again push further back to create again more lift from the foil. So it's a passive control and a continuous control to keep our boat flying out of the water. Uh, one important thing to note here is that the, the wand and the main foil directly affects the ride height, so how high we fly over the water. In a second, we're going to go into that in a bit more detail with what we can control in the boat. But from a starting point, the first thing that happens, the water hits the wand, the wand talks to the foil, and that decides how high we fly. Just to elaborate a little bit on what the wand and uh, the main foil are doing and how they're doing it. Uh, we're just going to have a little look at the system that we have in place on this particular design, which is the, the Wasp, uh, to help keep the boat flying as we go. So like we said, the wand moves back and forth in the water. Now what the wand is actually doing is it's connected to a series of push rods in the boat. And the first one is inside the, the bow of the boat. And if you just have a look in here, you'll see that that push rod comes out and connects to a lever. That lever on yet another push rod comes all the way forwards to something that we call the barrel. So the barrel is actually an adjuster that sailors can make to either shorten or extend the full length of the rod. And what that does 
is it gives you either a longer push rod or a shorter push rod and therefore affects how much lift you can create underneath the boat. So where this is connected here, it goes onto a bell crank and then all the way down the foil and onto the horizontal section that we looked at earlier. So as the sailor on board, if you shorten this by pulling the line on the barrel, when the one pushes back, this is as far back as the, the push rod can go. Therefore, that is the limit to how much lift you're going to produce under the water. And that will lower your ride height by limiting how high you can fly. Uh, it, obviously, it works the other way. So if you were to move, uh, adjust the barrels to extend the push rod, you'll be encouraging more lift under the boat. And therefore, your uh, end result will be that you fly higher out of the water. So this control you have the one that is a continuous passive control and then you have this finer adjustment that the sailor can um, have an impact on to uh, decide to so the boat can decide how high you're going to fly out of the water basically the longer the push rod the higher you'll fly the shorter the push rod the, the lower you'll fly we have established that the wand and the front foil overall are um, deciding how high we fly so as we move to the back of the boat, we will see that we also have the rudder foil. So the purpose of the rudder foil as a general point is to help control the trim of the boat. So how bow up or bow down we might be. So to explain that in a bit of detail, basically the more lift we have on the, the horizontal foil at the back, um, so the more angle of attack, the more lift, the more you're gonna push the back of the boat up. So that lift force coming up underneath the foil is gonna push the back of the boat up into the air and therefore push the front of the boat down. So you end up with a more bow down kind of sailing trip. Um, the way that we can adjust that on this particular kind of design, which is a, a quite a conventional um, setup now, it's been used on MOFs for years and it's been uh, transferred over to the WASP, and that is by adjusting a twist grip tiller. So James is gonna twist the tiller for us. And as we're twisting the tiller, what you'll notice is the whole rudder stock is moving and adjusting the overall rake of the vertical section. Now, as we've raked this further back, what we've done is we've pushed the bottom of the foil and the horizontal section further forwards, and that's created more angle of attack on the horizontal section. As we mentioned, more angle means more lift. So on this particular setting, we will be pushing the back of the boat up a little bit harder than we were earlier, and therefore trimming the bow a little bit further down. So if we were to adjust that back off again, you'll notice that the foil is coming more upright and therefore the horizontal section will be producing less lift so you would have a more bow up kind of setting of course both these foils work together you, you, there's no sort of um, uh, you can't get away with it if you were to put more lift on the back of the uh, of the boat on the rudder then that would affect the overall rake of the front foil and therefore how much angle of attack you have on the horizontal section. So uh, they do work together and that has to be considered and it does get more advanced as you progress. But to start with, it's very important just to uh, get the concept of the front foil and the right height adjuster on the barrel uh, controlling how high you fly and then the back foil and the twist grip tiller affecting your trim and bow height. Moving on to the Nikki, um, our, our junior purpose-built foiler, which is uh, great to see. Um, now, what we'll notice is that everything is fairly similar. We have two vertical and horizontal foils underneath the boat, uh, a main foil and a rudder foil, and we have a wand on the bow, but there, there are some subtle differences. So we'll highlight what those are. The first one is that the, the whole section of the foil, so the entire horizontal section moves. So on the wasp, we had the trailing edge that would make those angle of attack adjustments and how much lift you could produce. Whereas now we have the, the full section moving. So the, the lift force and how high we fly um, is done a little bit differently, but the, the, the whole foil articulates and moves. Um, inside the boat and on top of the boat, we'll notice that we have a wand that is now adjustable. So we can adjust um, how much wand we put down and into the water and on the push rod itself it is a fixed length push rod. So we don't have a barrel or any way of adjusting that. So the question really is how do we adjust our ride height if we don't have a barrel on the push rod like we do in the Wasp? How can we um, make an impact on the foil? And the answer is actually through the wand on this setup. So as you look through the various different foiling boats, um, there is many different ways of achieving similar things. Um, and this is an example of that. So instead of using a barrel to affect our ride height, we're using the wand. So the further down the wand is, um, 
the, the, the bigger the range and the higher you're going to fly out of the water before the wand starts to recorrect uh, re the foil angle. So that means the lower the wand is, the higher you will fly out of the water. The lower the wand is, the sooner the wand is going to come forwards and respond with the water and therefore asks the foil to reduce the amount of lift being produced and overall you end up with a lower ride height. So um, in basic terms the barrel on the wasp is what we can do to extend or shorten the push rod length which will have an impact on how high we fly. The wand um, will either go lower or higher up uh, controlling whether or not you can fly high with a, uh, a lot of wand down or fly a little bit lower with the, the wand length reduced. And moving on to the rudder on the Nikki, and there's actually not a huge amount to talk about here. Um, on the Wasp we, we, we discussed how you can adjust the angle of attack on the, on the rudder foil and therefore the, the pitch and the trim of the boat. On the Nikki, you'll notice that we have a fixed um, vertical section so the angle of attack on the foil uh, can't be adjusted manually from when you're when you're sailing so that is a fixed rudder stock and a fixed angle on the on the horizontal section but while we are here and because it's easy to see it's probably worth having a look at this um, which you should find on most foiling boats on the tiller and that is a piece of uh, shock cord or bungee uh, the reason this is here is to help minimize our, our tiller movement as we start to fly and lift out of the water uh, when there's reduced friction from the boat pushing through the water and we're, we're flying um, obviously there's less drag through the water and therefore the smallest tiller movement has a far greater impact than you might be expecting so uh, the bungee is there just to help support and make sure that you don't accidentally oversteer